Feliz Cinco de Mayo, todos mis amigos mexicanos. Yeah, it's Cinco de Mayo, 5th of May, 2019. Yeah, you know, most people in the United States have absolutely no idea what Cinco de Mayo is all about. So I will tell you, I will inform you of this. On May 5th, 1862, the Battle of Puebla was the decisive victory over the French Emperor Maximilian which paved the way for Mexico's eventual independence as a free nation some years later. Their day of independence is actually September 15th, not May 5th. Today they're celebrating beating the pants off the French, God bless them. Today we're taking a look at the Solani number 656 Aged Burley Flake. This is a flake which, using a very specific toasting and blending process, combines three different burleys. You've got some white burley from the country of Malawi in Southeast Africa. You've got some uh, Brazilian light burley leaf. And then you have some dark Kentucky burley as well, all melded together, no toppings, no casings, no nothing. Now, I have molested this uh, flake a little bit, but I want you to see this. If you can, let me turn on the light. I always forget to turn on lights for my videos, blind and all that. So let me show you this, if you can see this. This is a partial flake. This is a little strip I just peeled off the flake. Isn't that lovely? It's a very supple leaf. It smells like cocoa wheat cereal to me. There's a little bit of a chocolate scent, but the company, Colas and Cop, who make this, uh, and the blender swear, you know, there's no added sugars, there's no added casings or toppings. It's just uh, nice toasted burleys, three of them pressed into a beautiful cake. And made, these leaves are gorgeous. They're supple. They're really nice. Now, what I'm going to do to pack my bowl here is I'm going to take this, I'm going to kind of roll it into a spiral, which I will put you know, vertically down into the bowl. It's not going to be a very good spiral, but, oh, I just dropped some, too. A little plug to put in the bottom of the pipe there. I don't even know why I bothered. And just something I lost there. I lost a bunch of my flake. And then I'm going to take the rest of this and just kind of bust it up. We'll see if we can keep it burning. I'm not going to do a huge rub-out job on this, uh, mostly because it, it is pretty much ready to go right out of the tent. Uh, there's a good moisture level here. It won't burn fast. It's springy when you rub it out. It's very nice. It actually does benefit from, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes drying time. But we'll play with it and we'll rub this out a little bit here and see what I can come up with. So have you guys had a good weekend so far? Did you go out for Drinco de Mayo last night? <laughs> Big thing in Minnesota. They call it Drinco de Mayo. If, if Cinco de Mayo falls on a Sunday or a work day, <clears throat> typically on Friday or Saturday night before May 5th, a lot of the Mexican restaurants and bars and stuff do Drinco de Mayo <laughs> promotions. Yeah. Go out and have yourself a margarita with some tequila. Tequila is really weird liquor. I don't know if any of you watching this drink tequila, but tequila is the only liquor that I know of where you walk into a party with 50 people and, you know, there's 50 people in the room and you hold up a bottle of even really good tequila like Don Julio Agave Azul Reserva or something. He figured out how to get the door open. He did? Yeah. The cat just figured out how to let himself out of the house by operating the latch on the screen door. Anyway, so you're at this party, you hold up this bottle of tequila and say, hey, let's drink some tequila. Half the people at the party will go, yeah! And the other half will go, oh, God, no, get it. No, 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 be gone, be gone, evil tequila. I like it in small quantities, because for me, tequila is not an alcohol. It's a hallucinogenic drug. Not that I would know anything about hallucinogenic drugs, you understand. All right, this is still kind of moist. We're just going to stuff it right in the pipe. Let's just be unceremonious and just jam it in there. Sweep up my tray a little bit here and get the rest. It's too good to waste, I'm telling you. $13.50 per tin on average for a 50-gram tin. Is it worth the money? <laughs> I will tip my hand here and say, yeah, absolutely. 
it's fantastic. Um, it's amazing. You get this much flavor out of a burley without any casings, toppings, dressings, added sugars. It's sweet and creamy to start, and it's marvelous all the way down the bowl. Not really multi-chromatic. You know, it's not like a, a an English blend where, you know, oh, I get the latakia. Ooh, there's a little bit of that, you know, Ishmir. Ooh, whatever. Um, it's not like that. But it's not boring, if that makes sense. Let's uh, let's spark this up. I have no idea where I just put my pipe nail. That's my problem. Can never keep my hand on my tools. Pipe tools. All right. Well, if nothing else, I've got the finger. The butter knife tamper had to go to the dishwasher and back into the utensil drawer. My wife put her foot down. So I know I no longer have the use of the butter knife tamper. Thank goodness I've got asbestos fingers. Mmm. Ah, hot, hot, hot. It's fun to play with. It's fun to retrohale. It's fun to French inhale. It's not bitey at all. Yeah, you could be a pipe-smoking idiot, as I know I am, and you'll never bite your tongue with this. It's amazing. Okay, almost right away you get just a hint, but mostly in the retrohale. Uh, let me snork this a little bit, and I, I'm going to prove the point to myself. Yeah, you get a little tiny bit of cocoa in the ex, uh, the retrohale, but you don't get as much as you might expect from the scent of the flake in the tin. It is sweet, naturally sweet and super creamy. I'm going to re-spark this. And keep fondling my desk for my pipe nail. What did I do with it? You know, my desk is ridiculous. I've got seven or eight different jars of bulk tobaccos here, a number of tins, pipe cleaners, pipes, pipe tools, or, or uh, pipe debris. You know, there's all kinds of crap here. If treated sensibly, i.e. you dry it out just a little bit before you pack it, you are a little more careful with your packing technique than I just was. Um, this can be a one-match smoking experience. You know, you'll do the charring light, but it'll be caught enough to keep an ember going, you just go. Um, this is a marvelous tobacco for a delayed gratification technique. Uh, you can leave this tobacco in the pipe for several nights and come back to it a few days later and it will be a marvelous smoking experience, even sweeter than when you started with it. Now as you go down through the bowl, a couple things happen, as you would expect they would. The mouthfeel actually gets better, but not as creamy. It's a more dense mouthfeel as you move down the bowl. And a little bit less sweetness. That's when you start getting the cereal sort of flavors and a little bit of nut, but what kind of nut? Your guess is as good as mine. You know, it's not a cashew or an almond flavor, but it is nonetheless nutty. It's beautiful. You guys, this is really beautiful. Now, nicotine-wise, this one is pretty strong, and you might want to have a cup of coffee. That's my favorite beverage with this particular blend. Um, have a strong cup of coffee. My coffee had a little bit of half and half in it. I just finished it. Um, or a glass of water or something, especially if you're not used to tougher levels of nicotine. On a scale of 1 to 10, where lane Q would rate about a 2, lane 1 Q would rate about a 2, and something like 1792 flake would rate like an eight and a half. This is a seven. 
I love it. To all the reviews, the tobacco reviews, the consensus is this is moderate or medium nicotine. I disagree. Yeah, you can get you can get spun out on this pretty easily. It just amazes me how flavorful. I mean, I've had a lot of Burleys. You know, I had a lot of Codger Burleys. I know in my time, I love smoking Burleys that are lightly topped, like Carter Hall or half and half, and I like the Burleys that are less topped, like Albert. I've had a lot of Codger Burleys. I've had the Burley light without the bite or burly white without the bite. Um, I've had the Lane Limited um, analog to the old Edgeworth Ready Rub. Hello. Hi. Just checking what this is. You're on camera, you know. Oh. I'm doing a video all about this aged burly slice. What do you think of the room note of this, Betsy? That's okay. Not bad at all. My tobacco review says this is pleasant to tolerable, somewhere in that range. What do you think? Pleasant to tolerable. Yeah, it's not terribly heavy, is it? No, it's not at all. Not not heavy at all. You get a little bit of cocoa in it or something? Mm. As she goes fleeing from the room. But you see, it's not it's not terribly spouse unfriendly as you can see with the room note. I don't even remember what the hell I was talking about. This is quickly turning into a Nirvana bowl, even with the interruptions and trying to make the video and everything else. I usually don't crave high nicotine first thing in the morning, but if I did, because this is so delicious with a cup of coffee with just a little bit of milk or cream in it. Uh, this could be my wake-up smoke. If it were a little lighter in nicotine, I could probably smoke this all day. Just keep the pipe in my mouth all day. The flavor is satisfying. As I said, as you move down through the bowl, you start at sweet and creamy. You go to a little bit more nuttier, a little bit more piquant. And as you get towards the bottom of the bowl, you really get some spice. But there's no ashiness to the taste. One problem I've had with a lot of the burly blends I've tried is... You get down to about the bottom third of the bowl, and even if you're smoking with a careful cadence, they'll start to taste ashy on you. Uh, it gets to be like the old uh, prover proverbial and still disgusting, like licking an ashtray. Not terribly good. Doesn't happen with this. But look, I'm a pipe smoking idiot with far less experience, knowledge, my pipes are cheaper, my smoking room not as elegant as many that post videos here on YouTube. There are experts here. I am not one of them. But I'll tell you that to my tastes, on a scale of one to five, where one is disgusting and five is delicious, the squinty scale, this is a six. Am I sorry I didn't buy more tins of this when I had the opportunity? Yes, very sorry. And I'm going to stock up on this, even though Burleys don't mature very much when you sell them. It'll just be great to have this on hand. I don't want to lose this flavor, this nicotine potency, this Nirvana bowl. From the Dank Basement, I'm Paul Shelbetter, your wicked Uncle Squinty. Thank you to the good people at TobaccoPipes.com who had this in stock when smoking pipes, pipes and cigars, and j &R did not. So thank you very much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thank you for pressing the little bell icon that means you'll get notified of all my videos as they come out. Wednesdays, new nasal snuff reviews. Fridays, Pinch Witch a Squinty, a humorous and musical moment where we can do some nasal snuff together. And these pipe tobacco impressions and reviews whenever I damn well feel like it. God bless you. Have a great day.